This weekend, thousands of Latino professionals will gather here in San Diego for the Latitude Small Business Conference. We should note NBCU News Group is the event's official media partner. As a new report by the Latino Donor Collaborative finds that if U.S. Latinos were an independent country, their GDP would rank fifth in the world, surpassing the U.K., India, and France. The economic output of Latinos in 2020 was nearly $3 trillion. But despite that growth, the report still shows disparities when it comes to wages. Joining us now, Sol Trujillo, chairman and founder of Trujillo Group LLC, chairman of the Latino Donor Collaborative and co-founder of Latitude. Sol, it's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. The, the, the report also found that the Latino GDP was the third fastest growing among the 10 largest GDPs, and it grew during the pandemic. What do you think is behind this explosive growth? Well, it's basically that the, the most entrepreneurial cohort in America is the Latino cohort. They're creating 80% of all net new businesses. They're creating 52% of all net new employer-based businesses, meaning they're growing employment throughout the country. But it's also the youth, the youth of our cohort. Just to give you an example, if you looked at the most populated age is 11 for the Latino cohort. In the Anglo-American cohort, the most populated age is 58. So this is the succession planning that's going on within our country, whether we know it or not. And it's what differentiates the United States from other mature economies. We have a youthful cohort that's entrepreneurial, productive, the most productive cohort. And it's creating wealth and it's creating growth beyond all countries except for China now. Hmm. And so the report shows that Latino wages and salaries grew more than those of non-Latinos, but it also found a substantial wage gap for Latinos compared to non-Latino whites. Why do we have that gap and how do we bridge it, Sol? Well, I think there's two, two points we need to understand in talking about it. The first one is that the, the wage gap is in part explained by the youth. When you have a dramatically younger youth cohort, than an older one, you're generally going to make less money, right? You're starting your career as opposed to the middle or end of your career. So the, the income disparity is part of that. The other part is, is that historically we've been at the lower end of, of, of high paying kinds of jobs. But that is now changing. It is dramatically changing because the most increasing educational attainment cohort in the United States is the Latino cohort above all others. So it's in motion. That's really the point of this study. Even though we're starting lower, even though we're younger, it's creating more wealth now as reflected in GDP than any other cohort. And so very quickly, tell me a little bit about Latitude this weekend. Well, Latitude is a business event, right? It's a 21st century business event. Not the same people, not the same talk. As we're ta uh, uh, agenda, we're talking about 21st century America. And there's going to be, there's already about 6,000 people here of all sectors. We have entrepreneurs here. We have corporate uh, executives here. We have a bunch of CEOs that are part of the conversation just today. John Donahoe uh, from Nike, uh, Brian... Uh, from Target and David Kenny from Nielsen. We're going to be talking about a lot of the issues that are important to our country in 21st century America as opposed to 20th century America. It's really important, uh, Jose, it's, it's, it when we talk is. that. And so I'm so excited to be here. I'm actually looking forward to to listening in on, on that conference. Uh, Gloria and Emilio, uh, Juanes, uh, former President Obama is going to be here. I mean, it's going to be a fascinating weekend. I thank you, Sol, for being with us this All morning. Right.